Hey everyone, how's it going? Dan here, co-founder of PromptUb. And today we'll be talking about DeepSeek's latest model release um, and how it compares to OpenAI's um, O1 model. So we'll talk a little bit about the training process just because it, it was quite, it was unique. Um, they actually launched two models, so we'll cover both of those um, and kind of the reason and capabilities of each, how it stacks up against OpenAI's open O1, and then also some prompt engineering um, information about prompting with reasoning models, which we've talked about before, but this research backs up what we initially thought. So what is DeepSeek? DeepSeek is a Chinese-based LLM, like AI company, committed to developing models and they've committed to doing everything open source, um, at least for now, we've kind of heard this before, but so all the models that we'll cover today is open source um, available, the prompts we look at, the models themselves, the paper, it's all available, which is great. And like pretty revolutionary here. Um, and so we're talking about them because this week, January 20th, um, they released a first version of their reasoning model um, called R1. And there's some uniqueness in their how they train the model, but the performance is kind of what catches the headlines. Notably, um, they were able to achieve pretty similar performance across a couple of benchmarks compared to um, opening eyes 01 and 01 mini, as you can see from these charts here. So blue is the R1 model and the gray is the O1 model. So it started with what they call DeepSeek R10, um, which they trained only through reinforcement learning. So there was no supervised fine tuning. This is kind of the, and this is the first open source model that that's done that and has gotten to such high performance. And this is what is like essentially the base or what my understanding is this is the base for what becomes just the normal R1 model later on. And typical, you know, reinforcement learning, we've covered a little bit of this before, but basically it, you know, they run it through a bunch of steps. It gets rewarded when it does things correct. So if it gets the right answer in like a deterministic setting, like a math example, then that's, it will get a reward. Um, it'll get a signal that that was correct. And then also format rewards for putting things in between think tags. Cause they're trying to tra uh, train it to both get accurate results, but produce structured uh, chain of thought sequences as well. So here is the template that was used. Um, so the user asks a question, the assistant solves it, um, thinks about a reasoning process, puts the reasoning process between think tags and then an answer between answer tags. And then the prompt here is what like the task would be. So like sum all, sum all even integers between zero and hundred or something like that. So they basically just ran this thousands of times with all the different uh, tasks and fed it through the reinforcement learning pipeline. And we have this template up in Prompt Hub, if you want to go check it out, add it to your library, test it. Um, it's fun to try it with some some reasoning tasks. There's one already in there encapsulated in the variable. Um, and it does like a good job. It's like a very short and concise and I think well-written uh, prompt template for reasoning. And so what was really cool is that over the reinforcement pipeline and doing this thousands and thousands of time, the reason chains got to be very long. The models able to perform self-verification and even kind of self-reflective behaviors, these kind of emergent um, qualities. And you could argue, you know, is it still just doing next token generation? Is this anthropomorphizing a little bit? Um, but it appears to be that there's some kind of reflective behavior going on here. They note a specific example in the paper. So what we're looking at here is the actual reasoning um, that the model's generating and it literally produced, hey, that's an aha moment I can flag here. So, and this happens a lot if you use the, the deep seek chat interface as well. Um, it will often say like, wait, I need to do this. Wait, I need to do that. These are two examples from when I was asking about image support and then some other math problem I was working on. And it's pretty cool. Um, OpenAI doesn't give us any of the reasoning tokens when you use API in, uh, in the chat GPT interface. It's like they do some magic to it. So you can't see all of it. So it's hard to know exactly what's going on. Um, but with here, it's kind of all laid bare, which is really interesting. And we can see um, on the x-axis, the number of steps. So as we got further in the reinforcement learning process, the average length of the response got a lot longer. And generally speaking, a longer chain of thought correlates with a higher accuracy or higher performance. And we saw this in the MedPrompt paper when they ran MedPrompt um, with O1. MedPrompt is just the prompt engineering framework from, from Microsoft. And you can see here on the left side, they had a like quick response prompt template. And then on the right side, um, extended reasoning. 
and generally, you know, the extended reasoning had more tokens in the chain of thought, and that led to better um, results. And we covered this in our prompt engineering with reasoning models um, guide, which is now updated to include the deep seek info. So you should check that out if you want to learn a little bit more about that. About that. And then OpenAI noted this kind of pattern as well, where the more test time compute, which correlates, you know, with longer chain of reasoning, uh, chain of thought, increase in accuracy. So that's the graph on the right here. And so um, this model became very performant through its reinforcement learning pipeline, starting at like 15% accuracy and getting up to uh, like a little bit on, over um, 70 on just like one pass answering. And then when they did essentially what is like ensembling, where you take the like the best answer out of a certain amount, it was able to, after, out of 16, um, it was able to get above um, a one performance levels. And that's just what is, is being displayed here, essentially. So you can see with just a single pass, it's below, above mini, but below a one, then it becomes above both. It's above both from the start for, for math. And notably, it's, it's much worse on code, um, coding tasks, both uh, live code bench and code forces. And this is something we'll see later on um, as well. And so that's all great. Uh, it had a lot, it did have some issues though. It would mix languages, you know, English and Chinese specifically. And without the like supervised fine tuning, the responses didn't quite feel as like polished as you would expect from like a chat model. So that's when they kind of used that feedback to essentially build DeepSeq R1, also called DeepSeq Reasoner. And they just added some steps in the pipeline. So cold start fine tuning, they basically got a curated data set of long chain of thoughts as examples, um, kind of be a few shot. They also use some of the chain of thoughts generated from the previous training of R10. Then the same reinforcement learning process, then the human preference aligned feedback, which is that's when you get like the kind of more polished version. And then they also distilled this um, into smaller Quen and Llama models, which is really interesting. Um, a variety of them, I think Llama 3.1 and 3.3 8B and 70B, respectively. And so a bunch of, you know, benchmarks, um, reasoning benchmarks, math, coding ones. Um, and I think the most important things to note, it does very well. Um, so on the right side, you see bolded means it, it did the best out of any of the models. So it's going against 3.5 Sonnet, 4.0, um, 01 Mini, 01, and then a previous DeepSeek model but it outperforms 01, um, or at least is very close in a lot of settings. Um, but there are also a lot of things where 01 performs a lot better, specifically in coding, four out of the five, um, 01 performs better. And then you'll see, you know, there's discrepancies here in like simple QA, we're seeing 47 versus 30, and just kind of all these like across the board. But overall, I think what's really just like the takeaway is that it's on a pretty similar level to 01, which we haven't really seen another reasoning model do that. And that's really kind of the takeaway here. And so also, I think to note, Sonnet only had the highest on two out of the 21 benchmarks, but I'm sure we'll be seeing a racing model from them soon. And then lastly, something noted towards the end, which obviously caught my eye, was that they also they noted that few shot prompting degraded the performance when um, evaluating deep seek R1. And so, you know, they recommend using zero shot and like concise prompts. And this is something we found in that med prompt paper that we covered in our reason guide as well. Um, and is represented here that the five shot prompt did, you know, noticeably worse than just a minimal prompt or whatever they call a tailored prompt. It's just not having examples. And so it's another data point there. Um, I was kind of waiting for that. And I think that's, this is really starting to be a, a trend. And this aligns with what OpenAI actually even initially said in the Omen launch where it says limit the, you know, the context, um, in this case, they stay in rag, but it's just like limiting the context um, when using these reading reasoning models because they they work differently than the non reasoning um, and they can like overwhelm and overcomplicate the response. And so that's it. It's a super exciting time. Um, the model super fun to play with. You should check out their chat GPT interface. It's, it's free to use. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. We'll link a bunch of the resources mentioned below. See. Ya.